Now I have a trace laminated onto a copper clad board. I'm going to mix an etchant solution that when I put the board into it will dissolve the copper. It will leave the copper underneath the traces, but if I leave it in too long it will start to etch underneath as well, so I have to keep a close eye on it. Okay, so I have this Pyrex dish that I need to make my bath in. 200 milliliters of water is enough to cover the circuit board. So I have a ratio from my bottle of sodium persulfate that says I should mix 250 grams of sodium persulfate crystals with one liter of water. By multiplying that ratio by 200 times 10 to the negative 3 liters, I get 50 grams. So I need 50 grams of crystals for my 200 milliliters of water. So here I have a bottle of sodium persulfate crystals, a kitchen scale that measures down to a gram, and a coffee filter as well as some latex gloves. So now I measure out 250 grams of sodium persulfate onto this coffee filter, and then I will add it to the liquid because you add solid to water like you oughta. The reason for that is that the splashing from the water will be splashing acid all over the place and it will be more concentrated than once we fully diluted it. So we add the acid to the water to prevent splashing and possible damage to ourself or our surroundings. Once the sodium persulfate is fully dissolved, we can add the circuit board and let the magic of chemistry take over. It'll take anywhere from an hour to several hours in order for it to fully etch. Bearing in mind, we need to keep a close eye on it to make sure there's no under etching. And now we have an etched PCB, but we've still got toner on the traces. So we need to remove the toner, and we've got all this etchant left that I need to figure out what to do with. So let's look at that. This high-tech container has the spent etchant in it. It's not useless. I can use it for another etch. However, it does have a shelf life, so if it's not working when I use it later, then I dispose of it properly in accordance with local laws and make a new batch. So I've cleaned the board off with soapy water to get all the chemicals off, and now I'm rubbing the toner off of the traces using a cotton ball soaked in acetone. Acetone is just nail polish remover. You can get it from the cosmetics section in your grocery store. As you can see, it comes right off. There are a few little traces left on the PCB. However, they're non-conductive and they're not interfering with the traces, so it's not going to be a problem in the circuit. And there you have it, a nice shiny PCB. All I have to do is drill the vias now. The vias are the little holes. With the drill press, the process is fairly straightforward. Align the drill, pull down the handle, and you have a hole where you want it. Without a drill press, I would recommend using a hand drill, not a power drill. That way you don't have any vibrations or slipping or anything happening that'll pull up a trace. The bits can be hard to come by. You're not going to find them at Lowe's or Home Depot. You'll have to go to someplace more specialized. Harbor Freight sells bit sets that come fairly small and they'll work in a pinch. However, I would suggest going to a electronic store or ordering online for a set of bits that are specifically designed for drilling vias. Now that everything's drilled out and ready, I'm going to tin plate the traces. Tinning the traces allows solder to readily adhere to them as well as protecting the copper traces from corrosion and oxidation. So it has twofold benefits. It's not strictly necessary, but if you have liquid tin, 
There's really no reason not to do it. It's super easy, and I think it's neat. Now, the liquid tin does have thiorrhea, which is a carcinogen, so wear your, wear your gloves, don't breathe it in, be careful when you're using it. Note that I have a container labeled Science Bowl so that I don't use it for anything else. This is not stuff to mess around with. The process is simple. I just use a pipette and put drops of the liquid tin directly onto the traces and wait a few minutes. Once it's finished, then I just put the liquid tin directly back into the container and store it for later use. As with all the other chemicals I'm using, dispose in accordance with local, state, and federal regulations. I can't give you specifics because one, I won't be held responsible for it, and two, it varies from area to area. There are general guidelines for neutralizing spent solution on MG Chemicals website. Once the tinning is finished, the PCB is ready for components. We'll show you how to lay those out and solder them on in another video. Thanks for watching.